Hey, excuse me, everybody! Over here! Listen up! Alright, Eric is going to enlighten the group with family history. So Garner your attention this way. I just wanted about 10 minutes just to share a couple um, stories and a little bit about this Hackley family. And this is kind of important for the younger people to know because they have a unique history that most kids their age won't ever have a chance to put together. My name is Eric Hackley. My father was Charles Hackley. Charles Hackley had a brother and sister, Donna, Dr. Donna Powell, and Arthur Hackley. My father, Charles, was born in 1927. His father, Donald, was born in 1901. Donald's father, Bert, was born 1880. Bert's father, Jerome, was born 1846, and Jerome, uh, I believe, where's Valerie? Uh, well, you t uh, is uh, Jer Jerome was born 10 years after Calvin. Uh, a lot of you all's uh, great great grandfathers, what have you. Anyway, Jerome was born 1846, and then about a few months ago, I found, uh, no, no. Jerome's father was uh, the Reverend John William Hackley, who was born 1807. And for the longest time, I was stuck right there in 1807. I couldn't go back straight before 1807, and I was stuck on 1807 for about 20 some years. And then finally, I was just looking through the Amazon.com, and I pulled up the um, census and found John William Hackley's mother whose name was Francis spelled the masculine way so I said now this looks familiar so I found another book that showed a whole lot of white Hackley brothers and one of these brothers was named Francis and uh, which was the father of this Francis but before I talk about the Francis that is that is in our direct lineage Francis had a couple older brothers who were pretty interesting in their own right the oldest brother was named I believe it was James Hackley or John it's a whole lot of James and John Hackley's but um, this Hackley was married to George Washington's mom's first cousin so now these Hackleys and these Ball family uh, and George Washington's people, they were all part of this, uh, the British, as they fought against the, you know, as they overthrew the New Americans as they uh, mutinied against Britain. They were all involved with that. At first they were British, then they, then they mutinied and they became Americans. Anyway, um, this, um, uh, our Hackley, hold it. The older Hackley, who married uh, George Washington's mom's first cousin, he had a younger brother, another brother named um, Captain James Hackley. Now, I live in Fort Wayne. Captain James Hackley, that's a prominent name in Fort Wayne. I mean, for the longest time, I thought that we were the first Hackleys in Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne, Indiana. This uh, Captain James Hackley, who fought in the Revolutionary War, he had a son who was eventually transferred to Fort Wayne as they were still fighting the Indians with the Indian Wars. So, like all uh, victors do, when they get through the wars, they marry the people who they took over, they, they, they marry the kids. This Captain Hackley wound up marrying Chief Little Turtle's granddaughter. Now, Chief Little Turtle is the only Indian chief in American history who halted the Americans, America's progress. He almost ruined the whole idea. When the Americans were coming uh, west, and when they fought, it was called the Kikianga Wars. These, uh, you know, everybody knows about the little, about the battle of Little Bighorn, Custer's Last Stand, that kind of thing. That was the number two battle. 
the number one battle was ignored. That's the battle that took place on our land. But anyway, um, this Captain Hackley married into that family, and what that really meant, if I can make this make sense, is that on the one side of the Hackleys, the Hackley who intertwined with the Indians' family, um, and they had Indian, they had Indian offspring. And the George Washington side, it was all the same people. Bottom line is, George Washington and the Indians were in-laws. They were, they were once bitter enemies, and at the end of the battles, they became in-laws. But the whole point is that the, the Hackley lineage uh, goes back to George Washington's time with, uh, with uh, our great, 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 uh, I think it's five or six great grandfathers. And the history goes on back to, I found uh, the whole name Hackley comes from Hacklet. H-A-K-L-U-Y-T. Uh, that's a guy who was born in 1555, and he pushed, he and his um, uncle pushed the idea to England on the importance of, of England colonizing the Americas. Hackley was a writer. He was called the chief propagandist, and he was the one who pushed the idea on the importance of putting colonies and plantations in America. So. I'm not going to say that he was behind slavery, but he was sure behind the idea of colonizing the Americas. When you look at the Virginia Colony Charter, you see the name Hacklett right there. Shortly thereafter, the name Hackley evolves into Hackley. It's a story about the Charles Hackley in Muskegon. In a book I read about him, it said that there was a story of three Hackley brothers who tried to overthrow the King of England. And they got ran out of the country because of prices on their head. So one uh, kept the name Hacklet, H-A-K-L-U-Y-T. One dropped the H and called himself Ackley, A-C-K-L-E-Y, and the other kept the Hackley name. And, uh, but they all came out of, um, the, all this happened right around Culpeper, Virginia. And recently, I ran into a lot of Hackleys from Culpeper, Virginia through Facebook. I ran to Hackleys from Washington, D.C. And Washington, D.C. and Culpepper, they're real close to each other. And these Hackleys, I saw them talking on Facebook, and they didn't know that they were, were related to each other. They were trying to figure out how. I went to Culpepper. I visited Culpepper. I saw the Rappahannock River as it comes in off the Atlantic Ocean. I met Hackleys there. I asked these people questions. I said, uh, do you know those Hackleys over there? They said, no, those are a different set of Hackleys. And I said, now wait a minute. That, is, that makes no sense at all. You know, I mean, they're right there on the Atlantic Ocean talking about a different set of Hackleys. I said, no, 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 all y'all are related. So bottom line, uh, all you gotta do is Google Judith Ball and John Hackley. It'll take you to a bunch of Hackley brothers, Francis, who's our, in, in our lineage, um, Lot, I caught a white dude in Kentucky, and he has a Lancelot Hackley in his lineage. This is, this is in Lex Lexington, and he said, you know, I always thought that we had some um, black, uh, some African-American uh, cousins because in Lexington there's a cemetery there full of Hackley, black Hackleys, and white Hackleys, and that's why. So anyway, uh, so these kids here, this little girl's size, my granddaughter's size, no, ki no people around here is going to be able to go all the way up the tree up through uh, Valentine Hackley or, or, or uh, 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 Bert Hackley, all the way back to the Reverend John William Hackley, all the way back to Francis Hackley, all the way back to, to James Hackley. Uh, the Hackleys came from a place called Isle of Wight. I had no idea what that was. You know, I, mean, I thought it was a joke, but it's a, it, it, it's a real place. It, it's a, uh, somewhere off the coast of England, and uh, that's where they all came from. And the irony in all this is, on Facebook, I'm talking with some Hackleys out of Virginia and Washington, D.C. And uh, one of the people on there was, that I was communicating with them, was name was Manny. So I chimed right into the conversation, going with them and everything. And I asked uh, Manny, what part of Virginia you know, was he from? He said he was not from the United States, he's from South Africa. I said, okay, now wait a minute. So, I found them on Facebook. I went into the Facebook page and pulled them pages up. You can take those folks and set them right in here and they look just like you all. 
I mean, but then I found out that uh, the, the Hackleys left England. Wherever there was a dollar to be made, you can count on Hackleys going there. And, uh, but these folks, I mean, they all, they, they, uh, they look the same. I mean, uh, so anyway, nevertheless, uh, some of them said that they wanted to come over here today, but they wanted, they, they just want to see pictures and they, they had wanted to know what you, what you folks look like. So I, I will send them pictures, you know, um, and also with the Indians, there's Hackley, Miami Indians. I have not been able to find them yet, and uh, and I know that uh, some of you here have Potawatomi uh, in your lineage. And the uh, last uh, short story here, in Fort Wayne history, with Chief Little Turtle, Chief Little Turtle's son, William Wells, prominent Indian fighter, uh, there's a documentary about him. As a kid, he was uh, kidnapped by the Indians and raised as an Indian, little white kid out of Kentucky. But he learned how to fight as an early age, at an early age. And it's a documentary out that that shows where, when they were fighting the Americans in the, uh, it's called St. Clair's Defeat, 1791. They said that he scalped so many Americans that he couldn't raise his arm, you know. So when the great Anthony Wayne came to the picture a couple years later, the first thing Anthony Wayne did was hired William Wells. He said, no, 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 we, you know, you are white, you're not an Indian, we're gonna give you a salary and make you captain. So William Wells said, hey, I, you know, money. So William Wells became an American at that point. So a year prior, when William Wells was standing, was sitting next to the Indians fighting the Americans, now all of a sudden, he's with the Americans fighting the Indians, Potawatomi said, hey, this is not gonna work. So what the Potawatomi did was they waited from 1794 until 1812 and caught William Wells. It's called the Battle at Fort Dearborn, Chicago. They were coming out of Chicago, Potawatomi attacked. Uh, the first thing they did to William Wells was they shot him in the head, but they still scalped him. Uh, they broke his rib cage open, pulled his heart out, ate his heart, you know, passed the heart around because that was the thing to do with, with warriors. You eat their heart because you gain their, their you know, their, their spirit, you know. And I thought that was pretty neat. And, um, but, but, the, but the bottom line is that those are Potawatomi and William Wells, his daughter married Captain Hackley. So that's a little ironic that, you know, that uh, eventually they all, that all became family. But anyway, uh, I would suggest to you to just Google Judith Ball or just Google Judith Ball Hackley and it'll take you to her husband. And th those brothers is who everybody in here can tie into. It's just right there, it's right there. So that your kids, grandkids, all of them, uh, when you start out lining that stuff up, nobody's gonna have a lineage like these descendants will. And that's all I gotta say about that. Thank you. <laughs>